in so many areas of life, we are blessed when we are reminded we're not the center of the universe. This is why we cherish our true friends, people who can really tell us the truth, especially when we need to hear it, when we're being selfish or self-involved. And this is the gift of a good marriage, where you have two people who would otherwise live their own selfish lives, who have now promised and bound themselves sacramentally to put the other person ahead of themselves. And parents know this lesson too. Parents instinctively put their children ahead of themselves. And this is so important, and these are blessings, because so much of the rest of our lives tells us the opposite message. As the writer David Foster Wallace said in his commencement address at Kenyon College in 2005, he said, everything in my own immediate experience supports my deep belief that I am the absolute center of the universe. That is our default hardwired setting. And it is this default hardwired setting of us believing we are the center of the universe that helps us understand today's reading by Paul to the Thessalonians. In the letter, Paul praises the members of the Thessalonian church for no longer worshiping idols, for turning away from idols to serve the living and true God. Now, most of us don't worship stone statues. We don't worship golden calves. So we might think we don't have a problem with idolatry, but I'm not so sure. A couple years ago, Pope Francis once defined an idol as a projection of the self onto an external object. In other words, we take something out of ourselves, our fears, our desires, our thoughts, our beliefs, and we place them on an external object. We make a God out of it, and then we worship it. And so when we worship an idol, we're just worshiping ourselves. And so the gospel message that Paul preached to the Thessalonians must have been very powerful and very unusual because it counteracted this universal tendency. It turned the Thessalonians away from idols to serve the living and true God. There's a memorable scene in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, which describes Paul's uh, first mission to Thessalonica. And so as Paul is preaching the gospel in the city, there's a fierce opposition uh, that comes up against him. And his opponents tell the city leaders, these people, that is Paul and his fellow workers, these people who have been turning the world upside down are now here in our city. Turning the world upside down. And what Paul's upside down gospel message said was despite our immediate experience, despite our default hardwire setting, we are not the center of the universe. God is the center of the universe. But there was more than that. Paul had a kicker. He had a way of proving this to the Thessalonians. And he said, do you know who this God is? This God who is the real center of the universe? This God is the one who raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we might think about this. No mental projection can do that. No stone statue can do that. No golden calf can do that. It's really only the living and true God who can bring forth out of nothingness and death, existence and resurrected life. Now, you don't have to believe me. You don't even have to believe Paul. Ask the people who have been worshiping with us online for the past few months in our morning prayer service. When the pandemic started and we had to shut down all in-person services and we were no longer allowed inside our beautiful, our soaring, majestic, 
cathedral, it's not too much to say that we all experienced a kind of death. But out of that profound nothingness of physical absence, the living and true God has brought forth new life through all of these lifeless computer screens. Just ask the people in morning prayer and they will tell you that in their reading of scripture, in their fellowship with one another, in their worship, in their prayers and concerns for each other, they have met the resurrected Christ. Today is the formal launch of the Cathedral Congregation's stewardship campaign for 2021. And I'm supposed to tell you to give online. Please go to the congregation website, saintsavior.org. So I want to conclude with just this one thought. I can think of no better reason to financially support the congregation than this reason. The congregation is the heart of the cathedral. It is a community where we encounter the risen Lord. And most importantly, this encounter reminds us that when we are at the end of the line, when all else has failed, when we are ready to give up, when we've lost hope, when we just can't take it anymore, the burden is too heavy, when honestly it feels like we just died to the world. This encounter with Jesus tells us and reminds us that the same living and true God has promised in that moment to also give us new life. Amen.